This video is all about how the harbour process works. It doesn't include any of the details on how the equilibrium works, it's just about how the process works in general. The harbour process is the way we make ammonia from nitrogen and hydrogen. This is a really, really important process because we use ammonia in the production of fertilisers, which is super important for maintaining our global population. This is the symbol equation balanced as so, so we've got nitrogen plus hydrogen gives us ammonia. You'll notice that in the middle here, there's this weird arrow. This is how we show that it is a reversible reaction, which means that the reaction can proceed in both directions. In the bottom left here, I've got a key for my diagram. So you can see the pink circles represent nitrogen, the yellow ones hydrogen, and the combination of the two is your NH3 or ammonia. So at the top left here is the entrance for our starting materials, which is our nitrogen and the hydrogen. Nitrogen we get mostly from the air because the air is made of 78% nitrogen. The hydrogen we get from the reaction between methane and steam, which you learn more about in your organic chemistry module. Now you can see both of these coming in here, the pink ones are nitrogen, the yellow ones are the hydrogen, and you might notice that I've drawn more hydrogens than I have nitrogen molecules. In general, we're aiming for a 3 to 1 ratio of hydrogen to nitrogen, because if we look at our balanced equation, we need three times the amount of hydrogen as we do nitrogen, so this is reflected in my diagram. We can see that our gases then move into our reaction vessel. Now this container needs some specific conditions to optimise the reaction, to make it go as fast as possible and to get the maximum yield. So the conditions that we use are 450 degrees centigrade, 200 atmospheres, which is a unit of pressure, and we also need an iron catalyst in this reaction vessel. And you'll see in this reaction vessel that we've also got some production of this ammonia, the NH3, towards the bottom of it. Now a question that you might be asking is that if you've got all of these gases, how can we separate out our product? How do we get the ammonia out of this reaction vessel if it's just all in gaseous state? I can't just like pick out the ammonia and it's all good. So what we do is we take our gases out and we cool them down in this section at the bottom here. The ammonia is able to condense and turn into a liquid, and this means that it's much easier for us to get off that liquid ammonia and leave the remaining nitrogen and hydrogen there. Remember, there's definitely going to be some nitrogen and hydrogen left over because the reaction is reversible. There's no way I can force all of it to turn into ammonia without some of it wanting to go back to what it was to start with. Let's look at the last part of our model here. So what you can see happening is that the unused nitrogen and hydrogen from the reaction is all being recycled back into that reaction vessel to be given a second chance at turning into ammonia. This means that we're not wasting any of our starting materials and it makes the whole process more efficient and more economically viable. This is the summary of how the harbour process works. If you want more details about that equilibrium reaction and why the conditions are a compromise, then you're gonna to need to find a different video on the equilibrium of the harbour process. In my GCSE syllabus, it's not a requirement. <laughs>